working now. Hi. Good morning. I was a little behind today, so I'm kind of a wreck. So don't mind me combing out my hair. It's like in shambles today. Uh, so we're, we put the clocks back to last night. So clocks went back last night and it's daylight savings time, I guess they call it here in America. Uh, we've got Nicola here. Is it, am I appearing the correct way? Because all of the comments, I don't know what I did wrong, but all of the comments are sideways. <laughs> Good morning. So well, it's going to be interesting reading the comments today. We've got Jacqueline here. We've got Denise, Nicola. Okay, yours was last week. I'm just combing through this tangle up there. You guys, the kids have been just wild today. I'm trying to keep them quiet because dad is sleeping, but I don't know. It's one of those days. So I want to talk to you guys today about luck, coincidence, God's will. When, when stuff happens, when interesting stuff happens, when bad things happen, who do we think is causing that? Who do we think is the blame of that? You guys ever think about that? Sometimes? So we've got Derek here. Are you going to Bible study tomorrow? No, I'm filming. I'm not able to go. It's me, Joy. Do you remember me? Yeah. Have we met in person? I mean, I remember the name and I remember your handle here. We've got Minolta here saying hi. Guys, if you see me like doing this a lot, I don't know why normally the comments come up just straight, but today they're coming up. <laughs> I'm filming this like horizontally and the comments are all coming up. Um, not that way. Polly's here. Nicholas says, I think it depends on how you take it and how you react and how other people. Nana's here. She says, good morning. We've got Luis. Catherine, I spoke to you on Instagram. I loved your book. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, anyone who's ever written a book knows it takes a lot of heart and soul. Okay, so I am on my phone. And I don't know what's wrong with the rotation, but all the comments. <laughs> okay, what would happen if I did this? Um, let me see. Hold on, guys. Unless you, it's kind of corny how I'm having to turn my head. Okay, but if I do this, orientation is locked. Okay, rotate the device back. All right, it's not letting me. <clears throat> it's not letting me. Um, are you guys still able to see me? <clears throat> okay, so I hope I can. So what happened when I tried to turn the phone? So your guys' comments are coming up vertically, but I have my phone horizontally. So all of the comments, let's see, cancel. All of the comments are coming up in a way where I can't read them going up and down like it normally is. And now, man, I need some kind of a tech wizard here. Now there's a, a big thing on my screen right now that says orientation is locked. Rotate device back. But I rotated it back. And it's not, ah, uh, oh, oh. Well, I guess we have to do it vertically today. At least I won't have to turn my head to read the comments. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, seems like sometimes there's just technical issues. I think 80% of the time we're okay. Okay, we've got Clover Cow here, welcome. I have to lock this in place. Hey, Rodrigo, hey, Minolta. <laughs> now it's the right way? Okay, well, if I use my laptop, here's the thing though. Um, then it's, I'm gonna have to start, I have to start the live stream over again. We don't wanna do that. Can you please keep the door closed? Hi, Mom. Do you wanna say hi? No, no, no. Okay. My sons are 
going in and out of the house. I'm right side up now. Was I sideways for you guys? And it's to say, Catherine, how are you? Sorry for joining late. Some issues today. I broke my dad's car and stole what? Someone broke my dad's car and stole his MacBook. A lot of tension. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. All right, Lee Darren Jr. says, if it's God's will, then luck has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> um, yeah, Timmy and Eli are both here. Sorry, I'm like, oh, my hair's got so many snarls in it today. So the, the question, the, the, what I want to talk to you guys about today is luck, coincidence, or God's will. Do you guys think that any of them have anything to do with each other? Have you ever said, oh, I just had some bad luck? Um, do you guys think luck has anything to do with it? Might, it's different, right, in different cultures? It's different what you guys think. Manoka said, I've heard a lot from you because of the Darman channel. Yeah. Oh, we got Angela here. Yeah, both the kids are kind of cuckoo bears today. So... I've been reading a lot of my dad's stories, and he had one about luck, and I thought, I'm gonna share that with you guys, because I think I said something to Nana recently about um, coincidence, and she, and she basically, I think, told me what she just put on the screen now, which is the scripture that talks about things that seem accidental are really ordered by him. So, and even the things that come into our life that are bad, they aren't necessarily because God did something bad or he wants us to have something bad. Because um, he's not the only one at work, right, in this universe. We've got the devil. Ever since we, in the Garden of Eden, turned over our power to Satan, to the evil one, he's been allowed to kind of cause troubles. You know, we learn in John 10.10, 10, hey, we've got, is it Veronique? Veronique here? We learn in John 10.10 10, that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes that we would have life and life more abundantly. So if you're not, um, <laughs> Anna, did, you're funny. <laughs> Anna just says, I missed the martini person from last week. If you guys weren't here last week, we had somebody on here telling some tall tales about having five martinis a day, and then that went up to seven martinis a day, and I think, did that person get up to like 21 martinis a day or something? It was just wild. Hi, Orly. So, <clears throat> there's good and bad that happen, but at the same time, we know that the bad is caused from the devil and God only causes good. However, scripture tells us, hey Jarrell, scripture tells us that um, in the book of Romans that if you're a believer who's, you know, called by his purpose, that he, he works all things out for us, right? He works all things out for us. So even when something bad happens, he turns it around to be something good. So, um, and you know, sometimes that's hard to, it's hard to fathom because some of you may be saying, oh, well, what about the death of my loved one? What about when a child gets cancer? What about this? What about that? Again, it's hard to understand God and his purposes and why he does certain things. And it's hard for us to wrap our mind around um, loss. And, you know, I've been, as I'm reading more of my dad's stories, he's, um, I didn't tell you guys this last week, but my dad has got some heart issues and he's been hospitalized. And he's been in the hospital for 12 days now. And um, Lee says, Joseph is a great story about how God uses things for good, right? That's a perfect, perfect example. Um, so, yeah, I've just been reading a lot of my dad's stories. We're not sure, you know, how long. How long we, you know what, to be honest, we don't know how long any of us are going to be here. Doesn't matter your age. Hi, Angela. 
Thank you for the gift. I appreciate you. Um, <coughs> Minolta says, I have seconds. trust issues with people. Five, it's hard for me to make four, friends. Three, Do you have any advice? Two, one, oh, Terry's here. Introducing a Halloween gift. It's not Halloween anymore, but still. It's Thanksgiving. It's um, fall. It's fall. I know it's fall. You know, I'm going please. Okay. But Do they sponsor it? Is this on Facebook or something? No, it's it's YouTube, but I couldn't get my phone to rotate correctly. Oh. Thanks. It might be anybody's phone, but anyways. Pumpkin Spice Cheerios! Lemonade Edition! I have to back it up so it actually... Anyways, Pumpkin Spice Cheerios! Lemonade Edition! Yeah, can you send me on that? Oh yeah, I can definitely see. Get yours today, but I don't want to warn you. It's <laughs> Lemonade Edition! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way! Here's an example. Okay. Oh boy, forgive this commercial interruption. <laughs> oh. Let's give you a first touch. Be careful. Me! This is a pumpkin spice Cheerio. Sniff it. Ah, it tastes so good. Eat it. Okay. We get the point. Tastes good. Thank you for watching. Alright. Bye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. Yes, you can goodbye. Me. Forgive. Forgive this. He was kind of MIA from doing that for a while, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, someone had just asked me a question. Let me go back and see if I can find it. Uh. Okay. Lee says, "Trust God and obey Him." Jacqueline's happy to be here. Let's see, it's not my first time watching her lives, but I haven't been here in a little while. Welcome back. You guys, can you keep keep it down? Keep it down. Okay, as Minolta, trust issues with people. It's hard for me to make friends. You got any advice? Well, it's important to make friends and it's important to be friendly, but I don't know like what you mean by trust. Is tr you trust that they're going to be there for you? Trust they're not going to talk about you? <clears throat> what is the specific area of trust? Because we're not... <coughs> I talk about this in my advanced course that I have coming out. I talk about what our relationship should be with the people around us. And in that advanced course, this, you are worthy too, I talk about trust trusting God, loving and honoring people. The relationship God wants us to have with other people is different than he wants us to have with him. So really, people are to be loved and they're to be honored, but <clears throat> I haven't found anywhere in scripture, um, I haven't found anywhere in scripture where God says we're to trust people. Three, two, we're to one. love and honor yeah. people. We're to trust God. So maybe your problem with relationships with people is because you're giving them too much trust. And we're never told to trust people. You know, you get into a relationship with someone and then you you kind of see what they do. You see what they say versus what they do. Hi, Miss Motivation. So if you get in a friendship with someone and they say, <clears throat> I'll meet you at Coffee Bean at 7 a.m. and 7.15 comes and they're not there. And then they say they're on their way and then they show up 45 minutes later. You know, It's not, oh, I trusted you to be here at 7. It's people will show you who they are. And when they show you who they are, you believe them. Like if you've got a spouse or a partner who's violent and they hit you, he or she may say, well, you just made me so mad. Or it was just that one time thing, baby, I'll never hurt you again. I'll never. You don't necessarily take what people say and trust them. You see what they do. So trust is something that has to be earned. It's not automatic. So if that's stopping you from having friendships and relationships okay. with people, I would just say rethink that because nobody's perfect. Everybody's going to let you down. And really the highest level of trust we should be is <clears throat> with God, right? 
So let me go back and see what you guys have said. And then I will get into the little story I wanted to tell you guys. <coughs> and forgive me, you can probably tell by my voice. I am fighting a cold. I almost didn't come on today, but I think, didn't I miss? I missed a couple weeks ago too, so I wanted to make sure. Okay, so let's go back to what you guys are talking about. And, uh, oh, okay, Eli wants to say hi. Oh, you're eating pumpkin spice Cheerios too? Pumpkin spice Cheerios are awesome. And then this guy. Are you following in Timmy's footsteps? Oh, okay, yeah. so Lee was talking about a great story of how God uses things for our good. Um, is, is now Joseph. it's time for Noah. Uh, scripture of the day. Oh, scripture of the day. That sounds better than sponsor of the day. Okay, what's the scripture of the day? Oh. How about... Um, um, how about, uh, you have a different verse you want to share? Yeah. Okay. What verse do you want to share? I mean, I'm talking about love. Oh. Gosh, where does that, you used to have that one memorized. God is love. Okay. That's a good one. That, that's what, that's all I can think of. <clears throat> Thank you for Christmas of the day. You may not be sure. I, I want to annoy you. Know, you got a lot of Bibles. You could look in a Bible. You could look in a Bible and get some of your own scriptures and not have to have me whisper them to you and pretend so, that you came up with them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I might see you in the next live stream. Okay. My gosh, I'm just interrupted all the time today. Um, but yeah, I think we were talking about Joseph. And, you know, it seemed like really misfortunate what he went through. You know, his own brothers were jealous of him. So they kidnapped him and they were about to kill him. But his one brother said, no, no, no. His brother wanted to save him. They threw him into a pit and they were going to kill him. And they took his jacket and they ripped it up and because he had the most beautiful jacket from his dad. <clears throat> anyway, they sold him into slavery. So he became a slave in a foreign land. He was serving in Egypt, and he was in, you know, he was one of God's chosen. He was an Israelite. As he's serving, he gets falsely accused of trying to uh, assault a woman, which never happened. She just had lusted over him and wanted her to, wanted him to lay with her, and he refused. So she tore his coat from him, and he ran. And um, he had <coughs> ended up in prison. <coughs> he ended up in prison for that. So that all sounds like bad luck after bad luck after bad luck or devil's attacks, devil's attacks. But God turned it around and Joseph in that scripture, he ends up getting out of prison because he, the Pharaoh has these dreams and he's able to interpret the dreams. So when God gives you a gift, and that gift is, is used, when you use the gift God gives you, it puts you before kings. There's actually, there's actually a scripture that says um, how God puts us in front of kings. Our talents will find us out. Our talents will get us put in front of kings. I don't remember the exact scripture. So he goes in front of the king. <laughs> to um, interpret the dream that the king had. <clears throat> okay, go. You have to, I okay. Need to be able. Oh. okay, pause for one moment. My little one needs to sit on the potty and he, we've been potty training in the last couple weeks. So I'll be right back. <laughs>
Thank you for your patience. Anyway, Joseph becomes king. Well, he doesn't become king. He's second below the king. He's in charge of all the land, and because of him, the whole nation is saved, and they don't starve to death. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You guys hung in there. Parenting is no joke. <laughs> okay. Back. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <clears throat> Why Tram? Sim says, what's up, Timmy? How's school? Bottom line says, even though we receive bad in our lives, it turns out for good in the end. God does it for his glory. And, and that scripture that talks about God working all things out for our good, though, let's be honest, that's really only for believers. That's not for people who hate God. That's not for people who don't want to have anything to do with them. So you can't throw that verse around and think that. If you are running from God, you're an atheist, you hate God, you don't want to have anything to do with him, that he's going to work all things out for you. You know? It's like that That's that would be crazy like saying some random kid who comes down my block and is constantly yelling and cursing at us and throwing rocks at us and hitting us with eggshells and always trying to like hate on us and spread rumors and gossip that's like saying that I'm gonna go outside and come move into my house come live with us I'll provide you everything you need you know when, when you think of it like that you can kind of go okay and honestly God's a lot more loving than we are <laughs> so even if some of you guys could think well I might let some person move in with me who's been trying to destroy me God's even more amazing than that. So I don't know if that was a great example. Okay, let's see. Jordan says, hey Lee, I hate, uh, I hate Tim, Timothy. So guys, what happened with Catherine's dad? Is he okay? Oh, um, <clears throat> he's got some heart issues and his heart was beating so fast. It was like 190 beats a minute, which is not good. And, um, he was diagnosed earlier with uh, a congestive heart failure. So, you know, we don't know. We don't know how long he has. We didn't know if he was going to make it out of the hospital, but they did a procedure that was able to slow down the heartbeat. Um, we found out the upper two chambers of his heart is no longer working, so he only has the bottom two chambers working, and that's that's a lot of pressure to put on uh, a small little organ like the heart to be pumping blood from head to toe and especially um, especially if you're overweight it makes it even more difficult to pump blood throughout the body <clears throat> thanks for bearing with me with my cold and all <clears throat> okay let's see we've got Derek, thank you for the gift. How did you get the earplug removed from your ears? Remember, I went to the emergency room. I know, I was like the tail end of, I was rushing out of that story last week because I was 10 minutes late um, and I had to get to church. So the doctor removed it. So I think, again, that's another example of, is that, was that God's will? Was that luck? Was that coincidence? It was clearly the hand of God that I would get an earplug stuck in my ear that day just so God could set up that divine appointment for me to meet that woman who a couple of years earlier I had met and was told to speak to and I never thought I'd see again. So that's the perfect example. See, so we've got Elaine here, added it. Um, <clears throat> Clover has to go. Okay, Jordan, I'm guessing your dad must be sick. Uh, thank you, speedy recovery, yes. Um, let's see, prayers for Dadio. Thank you, Brittany. Try ginger and pineapple juice <clears throat> for my cold. I should try that. I do have, well, I've got pineapple in the freezer. I can put pineapples, frozen pineapple in the blender with some ginger. That might help. Uh, okay, so Nicola, thank you for the gift. Any advice on being an encouragement coach? Just start encouraging people. Everywhere you go. I was doing that for 
15 years before I started charging for it. It's not, and it's not just about rah, rah, like you can do it. it. It goes deeper than that. You know, it's life coaching too. So it's not just being a cheerleader. Okay. I agree with you, Catherine. It must be earned. It's not something just given to the person. It's hard to trust people nowadays. <clears throat> yeah. Lainey says, I was doing some baking today for my coworkers. Oh, that's nice. As always, you look amazing. Oh, thank you, D thank you, Denise. She's delightful. What's her name? Who are, I don't know who you guys are talking about. Sorry, I'm having some fresh juice I made. All right. <clears throat> what do you call a flower you can drive? A carnation. Get it? <laughs> Cute. <clears throat> yeah, you guys, thank you for your patience when I left. <clears throat> do you have any advice, BSS, do you have any advice for people out there who are thinking of giving up because of a problem, like getting a low grade? You can't give up just because of a low grade. You can't give up when <clears throat> failures happen and tragedy strikes. That's the perfect time to learn and to have a comeback, right? It's not the end of the world. Sometimes it's the beginning. So you know what, with that question about thinking about giving up when a problem happens, that's the perfect segue into what I wanted to share with you guys. Okay. Oh, this is the wrong, this is the wrong one. Let me go grab the correct one. Hold on. <clears throat> Be right back. Okay, I was going to share with you guys this, um, story my dad wrote called Living Life with Luck. And um, it's not the kind of stuff, it is, this is a story probably that's been written, I don't know how many hundreds of years ago, and it keeps recirculating and other people keep bringing it up. But <clears throat> it's talking about when things happen to you. You know how sometimes you guys can go, my God, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. This is a disaster. Like you were just bringing up the bad grade. How can you not want to <clears throat> quit when something like that happens and interesting like what can come about if you're just patient and not to just assume everything that happens that appears to be bad is actually bad because sometimes <laughs> you need to wait till it play, sometimes you need to wait till it plays out to see you know is this really something really bad that happened Right? I'm helping Eli put his robot leg back on, so. Hmm. Oh, wait. It goes here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, okay, let me just, I'm just going to get in this and we'll talk about it. Miss Ping Lee lived in the northwest corner of, oh, my Ping Lee, of mainland China. Mai was known in the nearby village of Ying. Low as a philosopher. Each evening at twilight, Mai would hit a lantern. Oh, would light a lantern and climb the side of the mountain located next to his home. It was there that Mai would sit and meditate for hours. Mai's lovely wife had died years earlier from influenza that had swept across the northwest Providence. After her death, he had two treasures left in his life. The first was his son, Yang Li. The second was his fine mare horse. His son used to pull the garden plow. So he had a son and he had his horse. One fine day, the young mare got out of the corral through an unlocked gate. The horse galloped towards the wild, rich grasslands next to the wilderness area. The neighbors heard about Mai's troubles and came to console him. Ah, so Mai Ping... Ping Li, sorry if I'm butchering these names. They said, now you have very bad luck. Mai replied, who's to say whether or not this is good luck or bad luck? You know, guys, his, his horse just got away. His horse ran away. That was how he farmed and tilled his land and he had no, 
no other means of doing it, right? So it can sound like really bad luck, just like when something bad happens to you guys, okay? But hold on. <clears throat> Two days later, the mare galloped back into the corral, followed by six lusty stallions. So, Yang quickly closed the corral gate. The neighbors returned back and said, Ah, so, my Ping Li, now you have so very good luck. Mai replied, How do you know if this is good luck or bad luck? You know, sometimes we try to think that's the end of our story and the story isn't finished. Angela knows there's a song that I really like and one of the lyrics of the song says, the story isn't over if the story isn't good. And a lot of you guys are falsely wanting to give up, wanting to throw in the towel and wanting to quit because you think your story isn't good. George, God loves you very much, beyond all measure, above and beyond anything you can think or imagine. He loves you enough to send his one and only son to die on the cross for you, for everything you've ever done or will do that isn't good or doesn't measure up. So, is it good luck or bad luck what you're going through? Is it God's perfect will? Is it coincidence? What what is it? And how do we know that we think this bad grade, for instance, or somebody getting hurt or somebody getting taken away or breaking up with someone? How do we know that that's not good, right? When you get in a traffic jam and you're mad because you're late for work. Um, another thing I'm talking about in my advanced course is when things happen around us and we get all worked up and upset and we think, great, this always happens to me. Um, this Nothing ever turns out good for me. But just trusting that everything works out in God's perfect will and his perfect favor to, to turn your life in, in, a, in a way <coughs> that it's going to be more beneficial for you than you could have even imagined. And sometimes when you're in the midst of something terrible happening, you think, how could this turn around and be good? You know, like if you have your son who's always on the streets and causing problems and in a gang or whatever, and then he gets put in jail, you think life is over. He's in prison. He's serving, you know, 10 years. Life is never going to be the same. You know, you can be so upset with it. But then he has an experience in prison and he actually comes to find God while he's in prison, turns his life around gets out eight years early on good behavior, and becomes a minister. You thought that was bad, bad luck, bad circumstances, you know. But God is able to turn around and use it for good. All right, back to our story. The mayor got away, but she came back with six stallions a couple days later. Now they think he's got good luck. A week later, young Lang... Mai's treasured son broke his leg while trying to train one of the stallions. It was a terrible break causing Yang to sit in a chair in front of their house until healing could take place and so he couldn't work in the field anymore. Here they come again. The neighbors come and they say, admit it, Ping Li. You have very bad luck. Li replied, how can you say whether this is good luck or bad luck? Do you guys think you could get to the point where when something bad happens or some kind of tragedy where you could go, maybe, maybe this isn't, maybe this isn't bad. Maybe this is going to work out in my favor. You know, the horse came back. I thought the horse was gone forever, but the horse came back with six other horses. Now I've got seven horses. And now my son broke his leg. And now the neighbors are like, oh, you've got such bad luck. So a month later, while Yang is sitting, young, his son, young, young Yang, is sitting in a chair in front of his house, the General Chao Mei, seriously, that's what it says. I'm not, I don't know. I'm just reading it. Please forgive the names. <laughs> okay. 
So the general came to the Providence with a contingent of soldiers. General Maine stated that he wanted all the young men of the area to join the army and fight off the Mongolians. The general said, I want all the young men to come fight with our army. However, I don't want any who are incapable, who are cripples, who have broken bones. And just like the three tormentors of Job, who remembers what happened to Job in the Old Testament, here comes the neighbors again saying, My Ping Li, surely now you can see that this is very good luck. So, you know, his son had broken his leg training that the new wild stallions. The neighbors are back saying, that's so bad, but then he didn't get drafted in the army to go fight, leaving his dad alone. So he's still there with his dad. Now the neighbors, oh, this is great luck, right? Okay. As time faded into the future, Yang, the son, married the daughter of the village mayor. They had three sons and one daughter, and their family became very prosperous and well-respected in their community. That would not have happened, right, if he hadn't broken his leg and stayed home and not gone to fight in the army. Oh Mai also became prosperous. He died in his sleep as a ripe, ripe old age, but prior to his death, he sat in the chair that once occupied his son, Yang. It was here that he contemplated the luck that he had throughout his life. And then my dad gives three different quotes on luck. The only sure thing you can say about luck is that it will change. Uh, another one is, I also believe in luck. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> <For those. laughs> I also believe in luck. How else can I explain the success of those I disdain? And the last one is the man who depends on luck will soon have nothing else to depend on. So what does that mean to you guys? What can you see from that? Um, you guys who've taken my, um, was it in my, I think it's, is this story in my You Are Worthy course? Um, one day I thought I had very bad luck. You know, I thought, I, I was auditioning for this movie and I really wanted to part in it. It was a really cool movie and I wanted to act in it and I didn't get the role. I thought, man, this is bad. This is terrible. Why couldn't I get this part, God? It was a good role. Why didn't you want me to have it? There was nothing bad in the script. It was, you know, I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I'm thinking God doesn't love me. Uh, why you called me out here to be an actor and you're not even letting me have the roles that I want. This is a good role. You know, I'm complaining. And then <clears throat> one day I was home and um, Timothy was three and a half. Uh, and it, Timothy has cerebral palsy. And the doctors told me he was never going to walk or talk. You know, and by the time he was three, I got him a little walker. And he could take some steps with the use of holding on to a walker. And <clears throat> I'm home one day and I'm kind of like, I knew it was one of the days they were shooting the film. And I remember thinking, this, this sucks. Like, here I am home on mommy duties and changing diapers and just, you know, cleaning the house, doing dishes. I could be on set shooting this cool movie, right? And then that turns out to be the day that Timothy lets go of his walker and walks for the first time without his walker. Now, had I booked that movie, I would have been on set and I would have missed the miracle of Timothy taking his first steps because his doctors and all of his therapists, he was in physical therapy twice a week, told me he was never going to walk. They told me he'd never talk either. And you saw him do that commercial. So it's easy to think when something happens in your life that doesn't turn out the way you want it to, that it's bad, that it's a, that God doesn't love you or you've got bad luck or, you know, the devil's just attacking you. But you never know what's going on behind the scenes. You never know how God's going to turn that around and how something great is going to come out of that. How about you guys? What is it? Can you think of any circumstance in your life that has happened that you thought, 
this isn't good, this is bad. And then it turned out to be a blessing. Was there a time you missed the bus? You know, you know, there's, I heard several stories after 9-11 um, in America. I don't know if you guys remember in 2001, September 11th, there was some terrorists that crashed into our World Trade Center buildings and they went crashing to the ground and killing thousands of people. There were several stories about people who were supposed to go to work that day, but they got sick or they didn't feel like going or something told them not to go to work that day or they were running so late they didn't they didn't get to work in time to be in the building. Like stuff like that where you, when you're in the midst of it, you're like, oh my gosh, my boss is gonna kill me. I can't believe this traffic, what's good? And that very thing saved your life. You know, you never know. So I, you know, scripture talks about count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And it talks about how these trials produce faith and perseverance in us, <coughs> which give us hope, which give us strength. I don't remember the exact verse right now. But let me get back to your questions, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you can think of any... Um, stories if you can think of any stories yourself oh thank you elena for the gift appreciate it nicola did you send me a second one wow thank you okay let's see jordan says i agree i like him and he reminds me of a younger version of myself he actually makes me think of my autism or disability buzzing reverse <clears throat> Get me for clearing my throat. I was like, am I going to make it through this live stream? Nana found the verse I was referring to. A man's gifts brings him before great men. <clears throat> Proverbs 18, 16. Yes. Um, Jordan says, one question. If you did do that, you should have into your house. How would you basically take care of me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Denise, I only speak English. I was learning, uh, I took one year of Spanish in high school, but I didn't keep it up. And I started to learn um, sign language when they told me Timothy would never talk. So I was teaching him sign language I don't know it fluently. I only know a few things. Like I was teaching him bathroom and eat and drink and and please and thank you. Things like that. Um, thank you for the gift, Nicola. Okay, hope you feel better. Hope your father comes home soon, says Orly. Lee says, the best thing about the love of God is even though Judas was going to betray him in a few hours, Jesus still loved Judas even enough to wash his feet. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I haven't been able to work because I've been homesick with a cold. Um, I still work this week, though. I tried to tell them I had a cold, but I think they just really wanted me to be in the Thanksgiving special that I... And, I mean, I don't have COVID or anything. I just have a cold, but so I just try to stay away from everyone, isolate myself, wear a mask in between takes, and but it was tough because I would, <clears throat> I would sometimes be coughing, then I would ruin the takes. I think I ruined more takes this week than <laughs> in my history because I just couldn't. Oh, Nicole asks what I'm drinking. So I made this. This is black grapes and cucumber. And I blended them all up with some water and then I put them in the strainer to strain all the pulp out so I could have juice. So it's great cucumber juice. It's delicious. All right. In third grade, let's see. Elena. <clears throat> Elena's learning Japanese. Wow. My brother speaks Chinese. <clears throat> 
All right, uh, we've got a lot of side conversations going on, so I'm trying to find ones you guys are directing to me. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. Um, Nana says, I love how you always say in the midst of trials, God, what do you want to teach me in this? And we don't learn from them if we don't stop and if we just stop and complain and bellyache and think everything is awful, everything is evil, uh, we're, we're missing. We're missing what we're supposed to get out of it. And if we don't get the lesson we're supposed to get out of it, unfortunately, we'll keep going through circumstances where we have lessons. Like, people say that a lot when it comes to relationships. So how come I always meet up with these guys that do this or these girls that do that? And it's like, well, what have you learned from that? Are you putting that into practice? Envious wants to know why the Darman videos are getting darker. Like the evil nanny episode. Well, that's one episode out of 600. I think they were only dark last week because it was... They had like the Halloween special. <clears throat> right? They had a bunch of scary ones. Yeah, that was surprising. That was the first Darman video where I felt like, oh my gosh, are, are, are we shooting a thriller? What? She's going to come at me with a knife? <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Um, oh, hi, Karen's here and Dusty. <laughs> Good morning. I was just thinking about you this week. I hope you guys are doing well. I should say gals. Hope you gals are doing well. I'm so not PC. I know people don't like it when you say guys as a general for everybody, but I mean nothing by it. Uh, okay. So yes, I have a, I'm a bit under the weather. <clears throat> Let's see you guys. Oh yeah. And I didn't get to all your questions last week. So hopefully I can get to them all this week. Okay, so Blake says, I heard a story about a blind man whose guide dog led him out of the North Tower all the way from the 78th floor. Wow. Yeah. God's, yeah, you're right, Nana. God didn't let me miss that beautiful moment, even though I was mad that I wasn't on that movie set. God had a bigger reason for it, right? Denise says, how long have you been an actor? 20 years. Well, it's probably more than that now. I just say 20 years because it's easier to just round up <clears throat> or round down. <coughs> All right, we've got... <clears throat> oh, yeah, Nana's saying the doctors told me that Jim would never come out of his coma 25 years ago. But not just that, but not accepting that. He did come out of it and is sharper than he ever was before. Yeah. Doctors, you know, doctors may have a good guess, but they are just practicing. And when they when they give us their best guesses or scenarios, they're not facting in faith and the power of God because faith changes things. So the diagnosis or the prognosis they give you is according to what they see in the physical realm. But if they're not taking in the natural, they're not taking in the supernatural realm and faith in the spiritual realm. Uh, Nicola asks, uh, what kind of Chinese? Mandarin or Cantonese? I think it's Mandarin. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to go back and see um, my folks. <clears throat> I'm going to fly back on Thanksgiving. And then I'll ask my brother if I remember. Uh, Jarrell says, do you have any videos of the mistakes you made when making your videos? Do you mean like, um, blooper reels? Uh, are you talking about that for Darman or for my, me personally? Or I put, I put my mistakes out. A lot of times I don't even redo it. Like I'll see, I'll watch my videos back later and I'll be like, oh, I'm finishing my teeth or, oh, my, I should have combed my hair. <laughs> I was watching one um, recently and I had like blueberries stuck on my lip from a smoothie I was drinking 
I just put the videos out anyway. I mean, none of us are perfect, right? And I feel like if I'm giving good information and it's going to be helpful to people, hopefully they'll just turn a blind eye to me having like makeup under my eyes or whatever. Oh, Haley, thank you for asking. God willing, my book, You Are Worthy, is coming out Wednesday, November 16th, the week before Thanksgiving. I hope you guys will all support me when that book comes out. I want, I want you guys to all go on Amazon and buy the Kindle ebook on the 16th, the day it comes out. Um, I'm going to mark it down to 99 cents for that one day only because I want you guys to help me become a bestseller on Amazon. <coughs> <coughs> hard to talk okay let's try to get to some of these questions all right my brother is eyeing the baking I did today thank you Nicola all right we have Shanti Drink lots of lemon water with honey and warm ginger. Thank you. And you know, you know how you need more rest when you're sick? But you can't rest because you're <clears throat> coughing. So <laughs> coughing wakes you up. Um, or Lisa, some people went to pray and it took them a little bit longer and they did not make it to work on 9-11 and were saved. Exactly. Okay. Um, Nicola, will it sell internationally? Yeah, I believe so. Well, I believe so. It will be available in all over the world, I think. Well, wherever they allow Amazon books. However, it's only going to be in English. I don't have anyone right now to translate in other languages for me. And yes, I'm thinking of you, Jordan. I'm thinking about how to record the audiobook. So, um, it's definitely a goal that I would like to do before this year is out is record the audiobook, and I will try. Mona's just stopping by to say hi. Um, BS says, what happened to the behind the scenes channel? I think they decided it just, people, not enough people were watching it, so it wasn't worth putting the time and effort into it. <clears throat> Oh, wow, it's almost 1 a.m. there, George. Hope you get some rest. Okay, Denise, she's in the student council. Nicola, will the book be suitable for teenagers? Absolutely, it will be suitable. However, I am thinking about making a book um, <clears throat> turning the You Are Worthy book into one specifically for teenagers, honing in more directly on specific problems that teenagers go through. But I think teenagers are going to get a lot of value, a lot, a lot of value from the book. <clears throat> um, I think anyone who reads it will get value from it, especially if they believe it and apply it. Fun TV says, I love your eyes. Jacqueline, thank you for following me, made my day. Oh, thank you, unknown ball legend said, I hope you win an Emmy one day, you deserve it. <laughs> thank you. Derek, thank you for the gift. You just stay home and not go to church today so you can rest. That is a really good idea. That's a really good idea. It wouldn't be appropriate to go. I could just stay home and watch it on TV. Uh, Nicholas says, you should do this with Giovanna. Do what? What should I do with Giovanna? <laughs> Denise says, remember, I prefer to be called Joy. I know it be, might be tricky. Why don't you change your name on here? Why don't you change your name to Joy on here so when your stuff comes up, I can read it the way you want it to be. 
yes, I must rest. I do have to work tomorrow, so I really should rest. I really should rest today. That's a good idea. Okay, so what circumstances in your life? I don't think anybody answered me when I asked that question. What circumstances in your life did you think, oh, this is really bad, this is not good, and then it turned out to work in your favor? Do you remember any <clears throat> of those circumstances that you've had that you thought, oh, this is not going to be good, and then it ended up being a huge blessing? Nicholas says, will you release a project with Shantae? Maybe. Probably. I've been talking about it. <coughs> well, <coughs> I've been talking about doing a collab with Shantae and Giovanna, and we are talking about getting together and filming, filming some stuff. Um, they were supposed to come over last Saturday, but... I had just gotten the news um, about my dad in the emergency room, so I wasn't I wasn't in the right headspace to hang out with them. Oh, thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Mike says, hope you get better. VS, do you like working with Avis Rentmore? <laughs> I did. I've I've worked with her twice, I think. She's a fun lady. She's um she does all this dancing. She goes to um like swing dancing meetups and competitions. Oh, guys, this is advice from Avis. Guys, if you're looking to meet girls, take up dancing. So she would go, she goes to all these things and they need dance partners, swing dancing, tango, all different kinds of dancing. There's never enough men. <clears throat> she said they're always fighting over the men because there's never enough men to partner with them for dancing. So. If you've ever had trouble in meeting the ladies, get involved in some of these dance clubs because the girls outnumber the guys probably 10 to 1. So she said a lot of times they're just, you know, partnering up with other girls because there's not enough guys to go around. And I think swing dancing is one of those tough things to partner with other females because like the upper body strength because there's like a lot of sometimes lifting the ladies up in the air and doing all that kind of stuff. So that's just a little tip from Avis. She said, I don't know why more guys do not get involved in dancing because that's where all of us ladies are. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you, uh, when will you see Shantae and Giovanna next? I don't know. Now, Shantae's supposed to come over this week. There's some videos that I'm going to show her on book publishing. Has Rebecca ever gone to your house? No, she has not. <clears throat> Unknown Ball Legends says, I don't believe in luck. I think to get an opportunity, you need to have a bit of hard work. That's for sure. That's for sure. Not everyone is who they pretend to be. Some are wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes. Orly said, I had a problem with my job and I couldn't work for about six months and I was really upset about it. And when I got my job back, I got whatever I prayed for a permanent job. Yeah, isn't that amazing how just God just turns everything out for us and works it out for our favor? <laughs> okay guys, well, <clears throat> I hope that was helpful. I hope you got something out of that. And I hope you're gonna start looking at your circumstances different this week. That when something happens, you stop and you sit back and you don't, just get mad or depressed or angry or be shouting at God, like, why did you do this? Why did this happen? You know, <clears throat> and just sit back in the circumstances and, and pray about it. Say, God, <coughs> <coughs> what do you want me to learn from this? What am I supposed to get out of this? <coughs> Show me what steps to do. That's about all I can do, guys. I gotta go. <coughs> <coughs>